in the video, I computed an integral that breaks math. Prime, you can look at the description, described a rather interesting integral of x to the power of dx, and an even more interesting solution to that. While watching the video, I was really curious if the solution makes any sense, and therefore I numerically computed it in Python. But before we dig deeper into that, I want to make sure that you know what the solution to this is. So what you can do is you can basically multiply and divide by dx, and now you've got a regular integral again. If you can make any sense of this thing. So we know that dx gets really small, that's the definition of an integral. So we can take the limit of dx, which goes to zero of that thing. However, like dx is zero, then this gets one, one minus one is zero, divided by zero. So that's an, that's an excellent situation to use the libidol. Now you can write down the derivative, which is x to the power of dx times ln x. The minus one disappears, and then divided by one. And if you now take the limit, then you just end up with ln x. So what this basically seems to be is just the integral of ln x. And we know that this is x ln x minus x, and of course, plus a constant. Now, that's the analytic solution. But you can also define integrals in quite a natural way as infinite sums, and this is called Riemann integral. And what I did to program in Python, I looked at the just really simple integral of x dx, and you can write it down as a sum of the different elements, ex, I just used that point here, and then times a delta x, now you just go to n, and what we do is we make delta x really small, and with that n very big. And for that, now if you've got a curve, then all these little bars add up together. And the width of the, these bars is delta x, and we make them really small. The number of these bars we make make them really big, and then we've got our integral, which is the area under the curve. And the only thing we have to adapt to get this integral, remember like initially we've just got the integral of x to the power of dx, we have to do the minus 1 because of the limit, then what we can do is just write the sum of ex, then to the power of dx, and then of course the minus 1. R. Does this work? And for that, I've used the cool tool of Programmit. You can also look at the link in the description. And I basically just implemented what we discussed before. So here's just a number for x, and normally we would just integrate it, and by using definite integrals we need bounds. So the boundary of b, that's the end boundary, minus the integral of a, that's the starting boundary, and that should be like the analytical solution to the integral. In this case, from 1 to 4. That should be the area. And on the other side, like defined as the infinite or like definite sum, I just called it like RF, like Riemann F. We've got the sum, which is S. We've got the delta. And for delta, we just divide the interval length by the number of steps how many bars we need, and then we go through all the bars and just calculate their area, 
which is like the function evaluated at the start and then at which bar. That's the height, and then times delta x. And we add that up to the sum. And now let's see, you can also you can already see it here, how this works out. Because if we run this, then now I initially called the analytic f and then four times our Riemann f with like five steps, 50 steps, 500 steps, and 50,000 steps. And what we can see is that the closer we get to infinity with the step size, then the closer we get to the analytic solution. Now for the other integral, we I just programmed a g function, which is the x times ln x minus x function. That should be the analytic integral. And for the Riemann integral, we're just gonna copy this whole thing and we rename it to g. And here in Python, we can see that the difference is really not so big. We just take the power of delta x and of course minus 1. That's integral of x to the power of dx. And then just rename the whole thing to g. Also with four different Riemann g's. And now if you run it, if you run it, then you can see that this also seems to converge to the analytic solution. So indeed the solution to the integral of x to the power of the x minus one is x times ln x minus x. So our analytic solution and of course our numeric, numerical implementation is correct. Thank you very much for watching and if you've liked this video then of course give it a like. Thank you very much. Bye.